In example four of the examples for class from Saturday, October 12th, we're given a statement of cash flows, an income statement, and a balance sheet, and the balance sheet is not complete. And what we're asked to do is uh, determine the balances that are shown here. Some are beginning and some are ending balances. Let's start with the 2023 balances and work our way into the 2024 balances. The first item is pretty simple. It's the beginning balance in cash. And I'm gonna work through all of these just with T accounts. We need our beginning balance. We know our ending balance is 145. So we need how by how much should cash increase or decrease from the from the, the beginning. If we come up to the statement of cash flows, we see a net increase of cash of 86. So all we have to do is put in 86 on the debit side because it was an increase, or simply say X plus 86 equals 145, and the beginning cash balance must be 59. Next item is inventory, in beginning inventory is what we're trying to determine here. We're given ending inventory of 60. Of course, if you don't like T accounts, this is just the same thing as just making a, a list here, beginning balance of some amount, getting to our ending balance of 60, two different ways to think about this. All right, so I wanna look at, from my statement of cash flows, my cash paid for inventory. I have cash payment to suppliers of 30, assuming that all of the suppliers were of inventory. We would have the journal entry be a, a debit to inventory and a credit to uh, cash. We also wanna know what inventory was purchased on account. So what do we have? What is the change in accounts payable? We're given that information on the balance sheet here. Accounts payable was 30. In the beginning of the year, 40 at the end of the year, so we know that accounts payable over the year. Remember, this is our ending balance here. So over the year, accounts payable increased by 10. So that journal must have been 10 increase to inventory and a 10 increase or credit to accounts payable. There's one item here in these financials that shows my decrease in inventory. The only right way that inventory decreases aside from theft, is selling our merchandise. So let's go to the income statement for cost of goods sold. And I see cost of goods sold was 32. So when that journal entry was booked, what we had was a debit to cost of goods sold of 32 and a credit to inventory of 32. And so now all we need to do is say X plus 30 plus 10 minus 32 gives you 60 or beginning in inventory of some amount plus the cash purchases 30 plus the credit purchases or increase in accounts payable of 10 minus cost of goods sold 32. Either way, we back into our beginning balance, which is 52. Accumulated depreciation is next. We want our beginning balance. Remember, accumulated depreciation carries a credit balance. The ending is 65. And so what's the one journal entry that causes our accumulated depreciation to change? It is the entry to depreciation expense, debit depreciation expense, credit to increase accumulated depreciation. And remember, accumulated depreciation decreases our assets. So I want depreciation expense. I go to the income statement and I see that it's 10. So there was a $10 increase. So some beginning amount plus our $10 of Depreciation expense gives us our ending balance of 65. This must be 55. And then we can add up all of our asset accounts for 2023, and we should get total assets of 340. We are missing our income taxes payable. So let's look at our income taxes payable. We have some beginning balance. I'm trying to determine. We have an ending balance of 22. So what changes income taxes payable? Cash paid for taxes, and I see in the operating section payment of taxes, nine. So when we make a payment, we would debit to decrease in income taxes payable and credit cash. 
So here's our nine debit to income taxes payable. What will increase income taxes? Payable is income tax expense. So I come to my income statement and I see an income tax expense here of seven. That would increase their journal entry would be a debit to income tax expense and a credit to income taxes payable of seven. And then we can just simply say X minus nine plus seven equals 22. And we sell for the beginning balance of 24. We can add up our total liabilities and stockholders equity and we will get, as we should, 340. Let's go to 2024. We need our ending balance in accounts receivable. Now we have our beginning balance of 84, beginning balance of a debit of 84. We're trying to solve for our ending balance. So what will increase accounts receivable? What will decrease accounts receivable? Accounts receivable will increase by sales, well, specifically credit sales, but all we have is sales revenue. So let's increase it by the 80. Increase, so we would credit to increase sales revenue and debit to increase accounts receivable. And we don't worry about if were some of those sales on cash, um, that we don't worry that these aren't all credit sales because now let's adjust for the cash collections from customers of 71. That's going to reduce our accounts receivable. 84 plus 80 minus 71 is going to get us an ending balance in accounts receivable of 93. That gets us total assets of 383. At this point, we can just simply back into what our retained earnings is, but we can also calculate retained earnings. We know the formula, beginning retained earnings, which we have here of 47, plus net income. From the income statement, we see net income is 28. And then subtract out any dividends. Now, I'm not going to find the dividends on the balance sheet or the income statement. Dividends would be in the statement of cash flows in the financing section, three of dividends. So subtract out three, and this gives us our ending retained earnings of 72. And when I do the math, I had better get to 383.